I have configured the new server here and one of the important configurations is the network configuration. The new server that I had, I have got one network port here and I have added one more network port in the USB. So USB to RJ45 is connected here and now that has been detected as new network cards. So here is PVE and in PVE network, I'll just refresh this again. Yeah, here you can see this is one of the network cards. We have been using uh, VMBR0 for the external and VMBR1 as internal. So I'll be creating a VMBR1 first and this will be VMBR1. I'll give it a name and here I will use the IP addresses. I will not apply the changes until I'm done with this. I'll copy this uh, from here and instead of 240.105, I'll use 100.105 and here I'll be using uh, no gateway for this one. And for the VMBR one, I'll be using this one over here and 192.168.240.1. And what I'll do here with VMBR one, I will be connecting this particular physical interface with VMBR one. Uh, and the new interface I'll be connecting with VMBR zero because the zero is in fact the external network. So for external network, I'll be using that USB network interface. A physical interface and with internal I'll be using the internal interface. So here right now this external internal is being used with VMBR0. I will simply copy this. In fact I'll remove it from here and I will be adding this physical port. I'll bridge it to this physical port and here I will be now copying this one which is here and I will bridge it bridge VMBR0 in fact with this one. So it is already right now uh, 192.168.100.105 and VMBR1 is also internal. I will just simply restart it and you will see that the network changes will take place. So right now I'm pinging 192.168.240.105 and at the same time if I ping 192.168.100.105 100.105 which will not give any response because right now the server is not communicating with this particular IP address. The reason is because uh, changes are not applied. The moment I apply the changes, the uh, changes will take place in a way that VMBR1 is now connected to the internal physical network and VMBR0 is connected to the USB network and that network already has the gateway uh, the external network connected, which I have already shown you in multiple videos that how my network is working right now. I will simply apply the changes now and yes. Now what is happening here? It has started uh, configuring it again and if I go back here, you will see that the response will start coming from 192.168.100.105 and at the same time there was a ping drop but after that the response has started coming from 192.168.240.105. Now what I can do here as I'm using pfSense here, pfSense was already brought to new uh, VM and at the same time in fact I need to of course make the changes here because network was connected to VMBR01 earlier so I changed it to VMBR0 so I will be again taking it back to VMBR1 because it will not communicate with VMBR0. VMBR0 has different IP range and this has different IP range. I'll be using VMBR1, which is for all my internal VMs and internal containers. So here also I'll be using same VMBR1, which is internal network for VASA also in hardware network. This one will also be VMBR1. And with PFSense, you can see here that external network is VMBR0, which is fine. And internal network is VMBR1, which is also fine. If I ping google.com, right now I'm getting the response, uh, but I will be stopping this PFSense, which is only one PFSense on my old Proxmox server. I will just stop this here. And of course, my network configuration should change automatically because the pfSense has started working here. It will give a drop because uh, right now the server is connecting to the pfSense which is here on this server. 
but from here the response will start coming or if I restart the network also it might bring back the connection again I will just do IP config slash release and IP config slash renew so this much downtime will be there definitely uh, let's see if the response has started coming back now what is happening here with the new pfSense new server on the pfSense I am now connected even I can turn off this old one let me turn off and you will see it that there is no downtime now of course it was only to the extent where the server stopped we will be getting the response of course here and if I show you the new Proxmox server so a new Proxmox server in summary you can see here everything is working great now my pfSense has also stopped if I show you 192.168.240.2 it will not work I will check 240.3 which is the only Proxmox server running on old Proxmox cluster so with this cluster I had these three servers running uh, two have stopped and only one is running right now even that server also doesn't have anything all the VMs have already migrated so I can safely now even turn off this and my old Proxmox virtual environment will stop and I will start configuring this new Proxmox virtual environment three identical servers and those will be added to the high availability cluster we were able to quickly set up the new server and we were able to restore the services immediately this can be done in production environment also where the mission critical applications are running you will take the backup of the VM and then you will restore the VM on the new server and then you can just unplug the old server and start using the new server extremely easy extremely simple if you follow these best practices so see you in next video take care and goodbye